Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean. Today we have a special guest. It's my older brother Jimmy, also known as Jim. Hello, all you people out there in YouTube land. This is Jimmy, Timmy the Tool Man's older brother, saying howdy. What we're gonna do for our, my brother Jim is we're gonna replace the spark plugs on his 2007 two-wheel drive Tundra. It has the 4.7 liter V8, which is the 2UZ-FE engine. What I'm starting to notice with these 2UZ engines is they're not all made the same. With this 2UZ engine, the switching valves for the secondary air injection system are right there bolted to each of the valve covers. Not like what we saw when we did the starter replacement on my buddy Ton's GX470, which has the same engine. Those switching valves were underneath the intake manifold in the valley between the heads. I like the fact that the switching valves are right there on the valve covers because they're much easier to get to. And for this job, I have to remove those switching valves off the valve covers so I can get a couple of the coil packs off because the switching valve is in the way of me getting the coil pack off. So you're gonna see me do that in this video. You would think that replacing spark plugs on any Toyota engine isn't that involved, but this is fairly involved because of the switching valves in the way. And you're gonna see all the steps necessary to let me get the coil packs out, the spark plugs out, and new spark plugs in. So without further ado, we're gonna get out to the truck and we're gonna get started with this job. Since I'm gonna be disconnecting a lot of electrical connectors for this job, I'm gonna disconnect the negative terminal on the battery just so I don't end up shorting something out. That's a 10 millimeter nut and I'm gonna zip it out with my Milwaukee ratchet in a socket. Kinda weird, but this is actually an 11 millimeter, it's not a 10. Okay, power's been disconnected to the vehicle. Next, I'm gonna remove this throttle body cover that has the engine size noted on it. I'm gonna use my Milwaukee ratchet short extension and a deep 10 millimeter socket to zip this off. There are these little acorn nuts. And there it is. Next, we're gonna remove the air tube that connects the air box to the throttle body. There's a couple hoses I need to disconnect to get the air tube free. I'm gonna disconnect this bigger hose first that goes down to the passenger side valve cover. You could squeeze this clamp easily with your fingers and then twist it and get it off. This is a little vacuum hose right here. It leads right there to the fuel pressure regulator on the passenger side fuel rail. So I'm just gonna twist this with my fingers and pull that off. And I can't see anything else attached to this air tube. So I'm gonna loosen these clamps with my 10 millimeter socket and Milwaukee ratchet. Okay, I should be able to pull this off. I'm gonna pull it off the throttle body first and then pull it off the air box. And so here's this tube assembly right here. This is not part of the instructions out of the factory service manual, but I'm gonna get this air box out of my way so I have more room to work in here. I don't wanna to have to work over the top of this thing. It looks like it's held to the body with two 10 millimeter bolts. There's one right down here in the front, and then there's another one over here. If you go to the back side, there's another one right down there. I'm gonna disconnect the electrical connector to the mass airflow sensor right here first. Gotta squeeze it, pull up. There's a plastic clip right here that attaches this harness to the air box, and I'm gonna use some needle nose pliers to get that out. There we go, okay, that's free. There's another clip that holds it to the switching valve, and we have to remove this switching valve so we can get to this coil pack. So I think I'm gonna disconnect it here too. So I can come in with my needle nose pliers on the back side and then free it. And so now this oh, bunch of leaves I just put on top of the engine. So this harness is free. All right, we vacuumed up all the leaves that fell down, and now we're gonna get this air box out. Okay, that one's loose, so I'm gonna get the back one. Let's see if this air box will come out. Yep, it comes out. 
voila. So like I said, this air switching valve for the secondary air injection system needs to come out on both sides of the engine in order to get one of those coil packs out. Now the question is, do I really need to disconnect this pipe that runs down to the exhaust manifold in order to get this switching valve out? You can tweak these pipes a little bit, but to avoid bending it too much, I'm gonna go ahead and come in through the wheel well to disconnect it down there at the exhaust manifold. So that means I'm gonna jack up the vehicle, I'm gonna get the front tires off, and then I'm gonna have access through the fender. I'm inside the passenger fender well, and normally there's a mud guard, a little thin rubber mud guard that attaches to the fender and to the frame to block stuff from being able to come up from the wheel well into the engine compartment. So if you have those, you'll have to pop those free so you can access through this area here to get to the nuts that hold the pipe to the exhaust manifold. I'm jacking up the vehicle via the cross member, not the very front one that the steering rack connects to, but the one behind that where the rear connection for the lower control arms connects to. So I'm just gonna get the tires off the ground and then get the wheels off. I've got the truck settled on jack stands on each frame rail and I'm gonna take off the front wheels. They are a 22 millimeter lug nut. I'm gonna use my Milwaukee impact gun to zip them off. And I'm gonna do the same with the other side. I'm inside the passenger side fender well and I'm gonna come in here and show you the connection I'm trying to disconnect. Right there is where the switching valve pipe comes down from the switching valve and connects up to the exhaust manifold. It's held on with two 10 millimeter nuts. The one right here is easy to get to, but there's another one down on the back side and these coolant pipes are in the way, but I've spied a way to loosen them up a little bit to where I can get them out of my way. And I'll show you those two fasteners now. So here's the heater hose coming down from the firewall. And you can see there's a bolt right there that is attaching this assembly to the valve cover. And then there's another one back there, right there. So if I disconnect those two bolts, I think I can move the whole assembly out of the way. And then I can get to that second nut for the air pipe. And again, the whole idea is so I'm not just disconnecting it right here and then cranking on the pipe and bending it a little bit to be able to get the switching valve free. So I'm gonna go for this front one first. Got that loose. And I've already got quite a bit of movement. Now I'm gonna go for the rear one. So I'm coming in with a long extension to get to the back one. And you can see that I'm on that bolt right near the firewall. I went with a different setup, a short extension, about three inch, and then another like six inch extension with a deep 12 millimeter because I was hitting this and I wasn't getting a straight shot on the bolt. Okay, that's loose. So if the pipe's loose, you can now see that back nut. So that's what I was doing by getting this free. Okay, I've got that one loose. I'm gonna go for the back one. I'm on it. Okay, I've got that one loose. So this is how you can get to these bolts by loosening this water pipe assembly. I was using my gear wrench 3 8 flex head with a deep 10 millimeter socket to get those air pipe nuts loose. So now I'm gonna disconnect the pipe at the switching valve. Again, there are 10 millimeter nuts and I'm gonna zip them off with my Milwaukee ratchet and a deep 10 millimeter socket. And then now I should be able to get this pipe all the way off. There's a gasket that seals it to the switching valve and a gasket that seals it to the exhaust manifold. So make sure those are there when you reassemble. And one thing I'm gonna share with you with how I stay organized when doing jobs like this 
is I have some Ziploc bags, I have a Sharpie, and what I do is I write what the fastener is. So these are the passenger air pipe little nuts. And then I put the bags in succession, starting from one side, working towards the other side. So I started on the left side, and I'm gonna lay the bags in succession. So when it comes time to put the engine back together, I just start from the right and work to the left. And now I have my logical order of reassembling everything, and I'm not gonna forget any fasteners. I'm not just gonna have a tray of a bunch of fasteners and have to guess what the hell they go to. This is a way you can not be guessing what bolt or nut that's for. You'll know exactly what it's for because you labeled it. So work smarter, not harder. I'm gonna make a disconnect of this air hose to the switching valve. I believe this hose goes into the fender well where the pumps are. The pumps are down in this area because on the 5.7 liter Tundra, that's where they are. So I'm assuming that's where they're at. I'm gonna use my bent nose, needle nose pliers, compress the clamp, move it back, give the hose a twist and pull it off. And I'm just gonna tuck this out of the way. I'm gonna make the disconnect of the electrical connector to the switching valve. The release mechanism is at the top. I'm gonna push in and pull back. There we go. So it appears there's three 12 millimeter nuts that hold the switching valve to the valve cover. There's one on the top right. There's another one down there on the backside close to the firewall. And there's another one down there. I'm gonna zip them out with the deep 12 millimeter socket extension and my Milwaukee long reach ratchet. I'm gonna have to use a shorter extension for this one near the firewall. This main wiring harness is getting in my way a little bit to get to that back nut. I'm gonna release the main wiring harness from this bracket right here. I have to lift up on that clip with this little screwdriver and I can pull it off the post. Now I get a little bit of flexibility out of that. Now I could get on there easier. I think the switching valve should come off. There it is. And you can see one of the gaskets I was talking about. See how it comes off? It's a little metal gasket. So you want to make sure that's there when you put it back together. In a perfect world, I would have got new ones for this, but I wasn't fully prepared for this job and I didn't know I was going to have to remove switching valves. But these are pretty durable. I can reuse these no problem. So now you can see I have good access to all the coil packs and I have to disconnect the electrical connectors and then I can zip out the 10 millimeter bolt and get them off. Right here, there's a ground strap right here. So I have to remove that also because that's gonna be in the way of getting this front coil pack out. I'm gonna go for the ground strap first. It's a 10 millimeter. And then I'm gonna work on getting all the connectors to the coil packs undone. The release tab is facing me. Sometimes these can be stubborn. Okay, I'm gonna have to work at this for a second. So I like this technique. I'm pushing the release mechanism, but then I'm getting underneath with a flat blade screwdriver and pulling the release mechanism a little bit further outward, and then I can work this off. There we go. That seems to be a good technique. I'm gonna do that with the other two. Now I'm gonna disconnect the coil packs from the valve cover. They're held on with a 10 millimeter bolt and I'm gonna zip them out with my Milwaukee ratchet. I've got all the coil pack bolts out and it's not a real big deal if you mix these up, but I'm gonna keep them in the order they are. So on the passenger side, this is the number two cylinder, the number four, number six, and then number eight. And then on the driver's side, it starts at the front going one, three, five, seven. So they're all even numbers on this passenger side. So I could just simply pull them out and then I'm just gonna label it with a little paint pen so I don't mix them up. I've got all the coil packs removed. Now I'm gonna use one of my gear wrench spark plug socket and extension combo. So you can see it articulates. It's a built-in swivel and there's different length extensions in the kit. The size of the spark plug is a 5 8 and this is a magnetic one 
They have the ones with rubber, but the ones with rubber in there to hold the spark plug, they wear out. So the superior type of spark plug socket is a magnetic one like this one is. I'm gonna go for the one down in the number two cylinder. I'm gonna get my ratchet and I'm gonna break it free. Okay, that one's loose. I'm breaking them free first with a regular ratchet and then to get them out the rest of the way, I'll use my Milwaukee ratchet. And here's our first spark plug. And so you get the idea, I'm gonna break it free with a regular ratchet first and then zip them out with the Milwaukee ratchet. For the front three on this passenger side, I was able to use that first extension and socket combo. The rear one, I'm choosing to use a shorter one because I have this bracket in the way and I have the wiring harness in the way a little bit. So I'm coming in with a shorter one, getting it in there. And then I have a little short, like inch and a half, three eighths extension. I'm gonna put that on my ratchet and then see if I can break this one free. And you'll quite often find that the spark plugs can be really loose, like barely tight. And that's sort of normal. And there's our last spark plug on the passenger side. So now I'm ready to get the spark plugs in. A lot of times people will ask me, hey Timmy, what's the spark plug gap for the spark plugs? And the answer is I have no clue because I trust that they're gapped properly. So one thing I look at is the box intact. And yes, it looks nice. And then I take the spark plug out and as long as I see a plastic sleeve protecting the electrode or sometimes they're cardboard, I'm gonna make the assumption that Toyota gapped them properly or whatever company you use, NGK, whatever floats your boat, that I'm gonna assume that the spark plug gap is okay and I'm not gonna get out my spark plug gapper and check the spec. I haven't checked the spark plug gap on any spark plug in a lot of years and I'm pretty old. So there it is there. I'm gonna install all four of these on the passenger side and then I'm gonna get out my torque wrench. The torque spec for these spark plugs is 13 foot-pounds. I'll most likely use my inch-pound torque wrench and to convert from foot-pounds to inch-pounds, just multiply by 12. 12 times 13 is 156. So I'm gonna get all these installed with the same spark plug socket and extension combos I use to take them out. I've got all the spark plugs torqued to spec. 13 foot-pounds are 156 inch-pounds. And now I'm getting the coil packs back in. One thing I wanna show you is this rubber grommet, sometimes it could stay attached to the valve cover, so you don't want to lose this rubber grommet. You want to make sure that rubber grommet is in place when you get your coil packs in. So I'm going to slide all these back in to their respective cylinders. The torque spec for the coil pack bolts is 66 inch pounds. Okay, you get the idea. I'm gonna get them all to 66 inch pounds. Now that the coil packs are all properly installed, I'm gonna make the electrical connections. You hear it snap, give it a pull back and make sure it's in there good. The final one in the rear here. Okay, they're all reconnected. I'm reconnecting that ground strap to the passenger valve cover. I have no idea what the torque spec is, so I'm just gonna go by feel. I probably could just torque it to 66 inch pounds because it's another 10 millimeter bolt, but I'm just gonna grab my little short ratchet and go by feel. At some point, you're gonna have to step away from the torque wrench and not lose your mind because you don't know the torque spec. Okay, that's good. Now I'm gonna get the switching valve back connected to the valve cover. I've got the switching valve. I'm verifying that the gasket's still there. It has these little tabs. I'm gonna squeeze them in a little bit and see if I can get it to where they'll hold a little better. Eh, I don't think I did much. So I just gotta make sure that that doesn't fall off. So I'm gonna slide it over the studs. There it is. And then I'm gonna get my nut started. And then I'll get the one on the back side, which is a little harder to reach. 
Okay, they're all started, and I'm gonna break out my torque wrench and torque these, even though it's not that important. But I do actually have a torque spec for these, and I'll give it to you. The torque spec for the switching valve nuts is 12 foot pounds or 144 inch pounds. I'm using my inch pound torque wrench. There it is. There it is. And there it is. They're all torqued to spec. So now I'm going to get the air pipe reconnected. I'm going to slide it back here. And I can kind of spy from here. You won't be able to see it, but I can see it from here sliding over the studs in the back. They're lined up and then I'm going to line them up here. There it is. And then I'm going to get the nuts started. And you get the idea. I'm just going to get all these started. You don't need to see it. I was able to torque the lower pipe nuts through the wheel well with my inch pound torque wrench and a deep 10 millimeter socket. And now I'm doing the ones up above. I got that one already and I'm getting the back one. The torque spec is seven foot pounds. I did a conversion to inch pounds, which would be 84 inch pounds. So now the air pipe from the switching valve to the exhaust manifold is properly torqued to spec. Now I'm gonna reattach this air hose that goes to the switching valve. I'm gonna get my needle nose pliers, compress the clamp and get it back in place. There it is. Don't forget to make this electrical connection to the air switching valve. Now what? Let's look at our bolts. So if I don't know what the next step is, oh yeah, the water pipe. So I disconnected the two bolts for that water pipe assembly, I'll get those back connected. See how being organized and keeping them in the order you took them off helps you logically get everything back together? This is a really good technique. So I'm gonna get this front bolt reconnected for the water pipe assembly. And then I'm gonna get the rear one. It's right back here. The torque spec for these bolts that hold the water pipe to the valve cover is 13 foot pounds or 156 inch pounds. I'm using my inch pound torque wrench. And that one's good. And that one's good. Now I'm gonna get the air box back in. I gotta go into the body first here, slide it in the hole in the body. And you see there's two things I'm aligning up. There's that thing to the right there, it goes into a plug in the body, and then the main one. Okay, that's popped in. Now I'm gonna start the bolts. I'm gonna get this one started first. Okay, that one started, and I'm gonna get the one on the back. And this is one that I'm not gonna give you a torque spec for. I'm just gonna cinch them up snug with my short 3 8 ratchet. We call that spec that we go by feel, we call it good and tight. It's that German spec, good and tight. Okay, those are both good and tight. Now I'm gonna get that air tube back connected from the air box to the throttle body. I'm gonna fit it on the air box first. And you'll see that Toyota puts a little notch there so you can line it up properly. So I got it lined up on the air box and then I'm gonna get it slid over the throttle body. Now I'm just gonna get my Milwaukee ratchet with a 10 millimeter socket and cinch them up snug and then finish the tightening with a ratchet. Okay, those are cinched up a little bit. I'm gonna finish it with my short 3 8 ratchet. So the air pipe is back connected, properly tightened with both clamps. I got this small vacuum hose reconnected back here that goes down to the fuel pressure regulator. I got this one reconnected right here. I reconnected the mass airflow sensor, it plugs in right here. I plugged in the harness right here, and then I plugged in the harness right there. So we're done with replacing the spark plugs on the passenger side of the engine. Now we're gonna work on the driver's side. The first thing I'm gonna do is go into the wheel well and I'm gonna disconnect the secondary air injection pipe that leads from the switching valve down to the exhaust manifold. You'll see it's very similar. I have this air switching valve that's in the way and I have to get that sucker out of the way. It sort of looks like to me 
that this side is going to be a little bit easier than the passenger side because those water pipes aren't in my way like they are on the passenger side. So right now I'm in the driver's side wheel well and you can see this area where there's clips and there used to be a mud guard here but that's now missing. So you would have to take that out of your way if you still have those and then coming in here you can see it right here and like I said there's no water pipes in the way so I'll be able to get onto these with a socket and a ratchet way easier. I'm able to get onto these nuts with my quarter inch ratchet and a short 10 millimeter socket. The bottom one's a little bit harder to get to but you can see I'm getting on it. So I'm gonna get these out the rest of the way. Now I'm working on the air pipe connection at the switching valve. I'm again using my quarter inch ratchet 10 millimeter socket and I'm gonna come underneath here and start breaking them free. Not a whole lot of room, but I can get on them. I think that one's fingered tight now. Okay, I think they're both finger tight. I'm gonna get both these off, you don't need to see it. I've got both nuts off. Now I should be able to remove this air pipe. Slide it off the back studs. And here it is. And it appears the gasket stayed in place on both sides. There's a ground strap that goes from this engine hook and then goes right over to there. And that's crossing right over the top of the valve cover. And I want to get that out of my way. So I'm going to get a 10 millimeter socket on that and zip that out with my Milwaukee ratchet. And I'm just going to plug that right back in where it goes so I don't have to keep track of it. The ground strap clips in right here. I'm going to pull that free. And then I'm just going to tuck this out of the way. Now that that's free, we do have this harness that's crossing over the top. The only thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to free it of this clip. So it's got a little tab there. I push it towards the front and I can free it. Okay, that's just going to give me enough flexibility to not mess with me getting that coil pack out. There is this bracket right here that is going to get in the way. So I'm going to take that out with the 10 millimeter socket. And I'm just going to keep the bolt with the bracket together. Now I'll have no obstruction to getting that coil pack out. There is this hose right here. I don't know what it does. I'm going to compress this clamp and twist this off and just get it out of the way so I can pull the coil packs out easier. Now I'm going to work on getting the switching valve disconnected. There is a couple clips right here and I don't have to remove those. I just have to pull the hoses out of there. Okay, those are free. And then I'm gonna disconnect the electrical connector. All right, and then there is this hose right here that attaches to the switching valve right there. And so I'm gonna try to get in there with my bent nose, needle nose pliers and make that disconnect. I think I'm gonna make the disconnect here because at the switching valve, it's a little bit harder to get in there with my pliers because of these fuel hoses right here. Okay, I got the clamp out of the way. Let me see if I can pull this off. Yep, I can pull it off. Then now, the same thing, it's held on with three 12 millimeter nuts. There's one on the top, another one down there on the bottom, and then another one back there at the top. I have to switch to a shorter extension to get to this bottom one. There, I'm on it. And you'll see the combo I have to get to that bottom one. I have a little short one that's like an inch and a half and a three inch one, and then the deep 12 millimeter socket. And I was able to use my gun to get that off. So now this sucker should come free. There was a casualty. One of the clips for the hoses snapped off while I was grabbing, it was brittle. The gasket fell down, I heard it, so I'm gonna go grab that. So now you can see the coil packs are unobstructed and I can get them out. I first have to tackle getting the electrical connectors out and I'm gonna use that same technique with the little screwdriver underneath the tab. You don't need to see it because it's the same damn thing. So to save time in this video, we're not gonna show the removal of the coil packs, the removal of the spark plugs, the installation of the spark plugs, the reinstallation of the coil packs, 
getting the switching valve reconnected because it's all the same technique that we used on the other side and all the torque specs are the exact same too. So I'm gonna do the job on this driver's side and then we'll come back and show you that the engine starts, fingers crossed, if I didn't screw anything up, and then we'll do the closing statement. I've got that side all buttoned up and I'm gonna do the final step getting this decorative cover back on. No torque value for those little nuts. I'm just gonna go by feel with my short ratchet. Okay, those are tight. And so now, the moment of truth, we're gonna start this thing and hope it starts up. I'm pretty sure it's gonna start up. Once we determine that it's running, then we'll just get the wheels back on and torque those to spec. Once you're done working on your engine, just do a nice double take. Look all around. Make sure you didn't leave any tools on top of the engine, any rags. Make sure everything is properly reconnected that you were supposed to connect because a lot of times you'll catch something like an electrical connector or hose that wasn't properly reconnected. And just like this, I forgot to reconnect the battery. So I have to do that. And I'm going to clean up the battery post and the connector for my brother because they look like they could use a little cleaning. Okay, we're going to start it up. Looks good. Sounds good. While this thing's warming up, I'm going to get the tires back on. All right, we are all done with this job. As you saw, it's a fairly involved job to replace spark plugs on this engine, but it's not necessarily hard. There's just a lot more steps like jacking up the vehicle, getting the tires off so you can get into the fender wells to get that secondary air injection pipe disconnected at the exhaust manifold, and then be able to get the switching valves off and move some other things around to where you can pull the coil packs up and get the spark plugs out and replace. You now know how to replace spark plugs on this version of the 2UZ engine. Like I said in the beginning, it's interesting the differences in these 2UZ engines. This one has the switching valves on the valve covers, not underneath the intake manifold in the valley between the heads. So that's kind of interesting. And I like this version of the 2UZ as opposed to my buddy Ton's 2UZ on the GX470 where you have to freaking take off the intake manifold to get to those switching valves. So if my brother's switching valves ever go bad and we're going to repair it the legal way, not the bypass way, then I know I'll be able to get to those switching valves fairly easy, which is nice. With all that said, we thank you for watching Toy of the Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean and special guest my brother Jim. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Click the subscribe button and also click on that notification bell if you'd like to be notified when we put up new content on our channel, which we are always putting up new content on our channel. So subscribe right now. Peace out. Happy ranching. Sick mods and sick spark plug replacements on the 4.7 liter 2UZ-FE V8 engine from Toyota. Bye bye.